Hello everybody out there on YouTube. Welcome back to more Daytona Speed Weeks content for Season 9 NNSRA Walmart Cup Series. I am Levi McIntyre, a.k.a. Thrashmaniac99, the voice of NNSRA Walmart Cup Series, here to welcome you to Daytona 500 qualifying session number one. Session number two will be coming out after this. And joining me for co-commentary for both sessions, please welcome back the co-commentator from the Bud Shootout, Johnny Gardner. Hello again. Yep. So the entry list we have for the first qualifying session include Trent Dunham, Dylan Young, Michael Norman, William Brock, uh, Nathan Hudson, Jessica Shelton, Charles Sanford, Bob Jones, Katie Cochran, uh, Tim Walsh, Austin Mongold, Pichu London, John Arndt, Henry Sanford, Dylan Thoreau, P.J. Williams, Dylan Poteet, Daniel Gilbert, Chris Washer, Zach Flickinger, Kyle Keith, Sean Galligan, Austin LaPlante, <clears throat> Anthony McCreary, Chase Oliver, James Qualls, J.T. Bryant, Dougie Shears, Blaine Keys, and Aaron Henderson. So those are the drivers we have for this first session. And without further ado, let's get this bad boy started. As there is the... Uh, qualifying ticker at the top of the screen where for these sessions as far as people who weren't in the top 30 in the points from last season <clears throat> or new people coming in they're going to have to qualify their way in so how these sessions are going to work as well as the duels for each qualifying session it'd be the three fastest of those who aren't in the top 30 or are new get to advance. So six drivers here in this session, in these two sessions, are going to get to qualify their way in. The duels, it'll be the same way, but you gotta be finishing high enough up out of three in each duel. That is correct. As the 35 car was the first car on the speedway. Yep, and that person is Chris Washer driving for Tommy Baldwin Racing, another new Dodge Dart team. Carrying the familiar Snickers colors. Yep. And Chris Washer is going to be one of those guys who will have to qualify his way in because he was 41st in points last season despite winning a race. But he had a very sh bad struggling season. So he's hoping that he can make it in these first five races and get in the top 30 in points after Bristol in order to have a chance to potentially win more races and get a championship. Let's, yeah, this is a interesting thing about with Tommy Baldwin racing team now. Washer drove a BMW last season, if I was correct, correct? No, he, he drove the 24 last season. Oh. I, I apologize. Yeah, dismal season in that 24, so now he's off to a new team with a new manufacturer. Let's hope he has a new return, a return to a brand new team to help him out. Yep, and a guy right behind him, Dylan Young, who had quite... <clears throat> an interesting season eight. Only one top five finish all season. Ten or nine top tens, but he finished third in points. Yeah. So he, you talk about consistency. That's exactly what he had last season. Mm -hmm. Right, right behind him, new, new uh, manufacturer. Familiar paint scheme, but for a different team, and that's Tim Walsh. Last season, he was in the 45 for Everham Motorsports. This season, he moves to his favorite number, the 15, but for Tweenix Racing. And currently, he is the fastest on the chart. And he uh, was 31st in points. However, with the uh, uh, several drivers that were inside the top 30 that retired from last season... Guys like Tim Walsh, Matt McIntyre, Anthony McCurry, and James McLeod got the uh, lucky spots to be in the highest outside of that top 30 that are running to get locked in the first five races. So Tim Walsh thanks his lucky stars for that one. Right behind him, two cars side by side. Right there in the number seven Jim Beam car for a brand new team that a lot of people laugh at the name, the Sevens Racing. <laughs> <laughs> is Nathan Hudson. Nathan Hudson, he hasn't been in this series in quite a while. But that he's back. Yep, so we shall see how he performs this season in that car. 
Right next to him is another new female to the series and one of my good friends, Katie Cochran, who's driving the number 12 for Penske Racing this season. So we shall see how she will be here in this series competing against top-notch drivers. Right behind them, uh, one of Nathan Hudson's teammates, James Qualls, in the number 70 car. And Qualls, it's been a little while since he ran in this series, but he will have to qualify his way in to the Daytona 500. So, season six, I believe he ran in Season 6 the last time. And right behind him is Dougie Shears, who had a really good season last season. 11th in points, a victory, and made the chase. So we shall see how if Shears... We'll see how Shears can do this season. Yeah, right behind... Yeah, teammate in this qualifying session with Infinite McCurry in the 61. Yep. Right behind Shears is rookie Henry Sanford, Charles's brother, running the number 24 for Hendrick, and he will have to be a one to qualify his way in as well. Right behind him is P.J. Williams, who last season had another great season, finished fifth in points, most wins out of anybody, three wins, six top fives, 14 top tens. And... P.J. Williams is definitely a guy who's tired of living in the shadows of a bunch of other drivers because he has come close so many times to winning the championship. We'll see how he'll do in an old ride of his back from the beginning. As the 26 is the fastest car on this track right now. <clears throat> now not, but that is Dylan Thoreau in the 26. And Dylan Thoreau will have to qualify his way in for not being high enough up in points. But he is in one of his in his favorite number, the 26. So we'll see how he'll perform in that Mustang. Still with Roush Fenway, but he's been the guy who's really been swapping a lot of numbers for this team for quite a while. The back in season 7, he was in the 17. Last season was in the 99, this season in the 26, but still within the Roush camp. Mhm. Mm Hmm. I apologize for that. Uh, let's see, right here is Blaine Keys, another rookie who jumped in the second quick right now. But Blaine Keys, I have seen compete in the uh, old NNSCRA Walking Dead series as well as NRSL series for Dylan Young and a bunch of other NNSCRA series that I have seen over the last couple of years. We'll see how Blaine does here in the Walmart Cup. Michael right Norman. Yep, Michael Norman, a former 500 winner, currently fourth fastest, and last season he had a rather up and down season, finished 19th in points, six top fives, 11 top tens. He picked it up towards the end of the season, but he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to uh, get back into being a championship contender. Right behind this, <clears throat> in the 21, that is rookie John Arndt, who I saw compete in the Walking Dead series and is racing in other NR series as well. But we'll see how he does here in the big leagues. And right behind him, Bob Jones, who was uh, last season 25th in points, had pretty much a mediocre season, but we'll see how he does here in season 9. Right behind him, Austin LaPlante, who had a... Very good season in Season 8. Seventh in points, got a win. Only two top fives, but 12 top tens. So he had a consistent season himself, but he wants to win more races and possibly win the championship. And he just might do it here in Season number 9. Right behind him, Sean Galligan, who is now back in his favorite number to 44, but for Richard Petty Motorsports in the Dodge Dart. So we'll see how Galligan will do here in this ride. Right behind him, rookie Daniel Gilbert, who I saw compete in the uh, few races I commentated for the NNSRA Mobile One Cup Series back in Season 9, I believe. 
Yeah, it was season nine. Yeah, season nine. <clears throat> so, Daniel Gilbert will see how he does for Richard Childress racing in the number 33. And right behind him is Austin Mongold in the number 16 subway car for Roush in the Mustang. And Mongold had a pretty decent rookie season, 16th in points. But we'll see how he does here in his sophomore season. Right behind him... In the number 77, the returning number 77 for Penske, rookie J.T. Bryant. I've seen him compete in some offline series, but mostly known through online. We'll see how Bryant does here in the big leagues of offline. And we've already gone over Dylan Young and, and Chris Washer, and there is Charles Sanford. Charles Sanford, who last season... Had a mediocre season, 21st in points, did win a race, but he wants to get back into being in the chase, and he might be able to pull it off this season. Right there on the apron in the number 17, that is Pichu London, who last season had a struggle, 29th in points, but did get his first win last season. But can he win again and get the, into the chase? Right behind him, racing for Yates Racing, that is Zach Flickinger in the number 38 pedigree car. Zach Flickinger I've seen compete elsewhere offline. But how will he do in the big leagues? It's up to him. As we got a big pack of cars right here, and right there, Chase Oliver, who took a, retire who took a short retirement from last season, but now he is back. Back to his last number, the number 68, but for Hendrick Motorsports Racing for that team. And currently on the charts, not so good, 25th currently on the chart. But luckily he's in a big pack, so he could be able to make something work. Of course. Goodbye. <clears throat> All right, and there is Dylan Poteet, who last season had a... Uh, a very good season. Got a win. Finished ninth in points. Was in the chase. We'll see if he can improve on that this season. Back here, it is Trent Dunham, who was a uh, <clears throat> chase for the championship contender. Although, finished dead last in the chase. 14th in points. But he definitely wants to uh, redeem himself by winning more races and getting in the chase again and doing better. Right there in the number four, that is William Brock, who is new on the uh, offline scene here in, in in R. So we'll see how he does here in this first series, I believe. Right there in the middle, originally was going to be in the number 28, but after the untimely death of Rue McIntyre, the 28 is retired from the series and is replaced by the 98, and that is Aaron Henderson, who I have seen compete in series ran by Dylan Young and Eric Burton, guys like that. We'll see how he does here in the big leagues. Right behind him, another rookie from NRSL mostly, Kyle Keefe in the number 42 for uh, Ganassi Racing. And then behind him is Red Bull Racing driver Anthony McCurry, still in the 61, however, <clears throat> not an Audi. The Audis are officially no more here in this series, so he's going to be in that Toyota forever, it seems. <laughs> And like he said, Audi had a big budget cut, so... <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate that Audi's had to pull out. Yeah. But he's in a good team with other good drivers for for that Red Bull team. Let's see if I missed anybody. Which I'm pretty sure I know I probably have missed at least one person. Oh yeah, right there. There is last season's champion, Jessica Sheldon. And she had... The most consistent season out of anybody had only five top tens, or not, or five top fives, 12 top tens, did not win a single race and won the championship. That was only the second time in the history of this series that a driver who didn't win a race won a championship. Season two, it was done by Gabe Williams when he was a rookie, which was historic in itself. Sheldon being the second one to do that. And Sheldon currently third on the speed charts, which is really good. That's for sure. I am looking around to make sure that I got everybody as far as discussion, and I believe that was everybody. 
Yep, indeed. So currently, as we got about six minutes left here in this session, that man right there, Dylan Thoreau, is currently on the pole for the Daytona 500. This first session will be to determine who starts first in the 500 as well as the uh, field for the first Gatorade duel. And right now, Dylan Thoreau, who's one of them go-or-go-home drivers, currently fastest. So right now, the three top go-or-go-home drivers are Dylan Thoreau, James Qualls, and Henry Sanford, running first, second, fourth, respectively. That's right. But you never know if guys can get into a big pack such as this, they may be able to make something work, and... Nathan Hudson almost got a better lap, just missed it by about four tenths. We'll see if this lap he can improve. <clears throat> Which I don't know if he will, but we'll see as he comes to the stripe. Actually, a much slower lap time right there as we've got yeah. five minutes left in session number one. You would think that with more cars in a pack like this, they'd be running really fast lap times, but it doesn't seem to be the case at this point. Yeah, and uh, looks like Don Throw's speed is 197.594 miles an hour on the speed chart. So. Yeah, and which, uh, let's see where the 26 currently is right now. There he is. There he is. <laughs> as we've got a little over four minutes to spare here in this session and now this pack's starting to get organized and Jessica Sheldon was only le a little less than three tenths off of her previous lap time in order to get going so maybe these guys right here in this pack could make something work and Sean Galgan actually jumped up to fourth on the chart so they could make something work and maybe we'll get some change-ups within the uh, go or go home drivers although oh. Pichu London that might have just slowed the momentum down of so many people but let's see if Sheldon let's see if she can jump up any here on this lap no I actually had a slower lap time But maybe if this pack can get bunched back up again, they could manage to get up there to the pole, if possible. Indeed. This is where we got oh, under almost three minutes less to go. Yep. So currently the top three of the uh, Go or Go Home drivers are still Thoreau, Qualls, and actually a new person now in there, Kyle Keith, who managed to jump ahead of Henry Sanford in order to get to that important third spot for Go or Go Home purposes. That's true. So yeah, that is how it is. And Kyle Keith actually jumped up to the top of the charts now and Anthony McCreary. And Anthony McCreary managed to get to second. Where are they is the question. Oh, they're in a little pack of themselves that's real well organized. So right now it's still Keith, Thoreau, and Qualls, but in a different order, Kyle Keith being on the pole right now. Indeed. Oh man, don't don't go four wide. They're four wide. Four that wide. Work. That ain't gonna work. And at the, oh. They managed to make it work somehow. Daniel Gilbert did the smart thing of backing off on the high line to let them go. Almost 198 miles an hour on Kyle Keith's car. Yeah. Nathan Hudson actually jumped up into third, so he's currently the second quickest of Go-Go Homer. So now it's Keith, Hudson, and Thoreau now. So James Qualls got knocked down a little bit, but Henry Sanford trying to get up there as he moved up into six quick on the charts with a faster lap time. As they're in a pack of themselves, let's see if it changes anything. 
Yeah. Oh, Henry Sanford and Nathan Hudson go to the top two. So right They're now coming. it's Sanford, Hudson, and Keith. There we go. Man, we're starting to see the fast times come out now because we are now less than a minute left of the official qualifying time, but then they'll be given an extra 45 seconds, I think, to finish laps. They were on at the point of uh, the time. We just hit 198 miles an hour on the 24. All right, let's see if uh, these laps got better or worse this time. Mm, yeah, they got a little slower. Let's go back to this pack right here with uh, Dunham, McCreary, Poteet, Keith, and Brock right now. But, man, that top three is dominated right now by the go-or-go-home drivers. <clears throat> that is true. And these guys are going to have, these guys are most likely going to have one more lap left to try to shuffle up that top ten. 45 seconds, final time starts now. Which of the pack, which two of the, which of the two packs is going to get the faster times here? The pack led by Hudson or the pack that was led by Kyle Keith? Let's see, Hudson here, a little bit slower. And now this pack sort of got separated, so I don't see these guys running faster. No. As we got only 10 seconds left of the official time. Oh, we got a last minute pack. Could they make something happen? No, not quite. As now qualifying is officially over. Congratulations, Henry Sanford for locking himself into the Daytona 500 and starting on the pole. The rest of the go go homers that got in, Nathan Hudson, Kyle Keith. So here is the uh, qualifying results on your screen after this session's over. And until we get to session number two, thank you for watching. Bye.